you have one last chance to solidify a good interview or repair the damage of a lackluster one. Don't blow it. Make sure you answer this one seemingly innocuous question correctly. And there is only one correct answer. Sadly, this is one of the areas that many get wrong, giving up a huge opportunity. So let's get right to it. This one mistake has cost more professionals their dream job than you might imagine. So what is that big question and what is the correct answer? Your interviewer is likely to say something like, do you have any more questions for me at the end? There's only one correct answer. And that is yes. That's it, that's simple. Well, that's great, you may be thinking, but what do I ask after that? What if I don't have any questions? I usually don't. We've got you covered. We're going to share a handful of questions successful job seekers use to leave their interviewers ready and eager to invite them back for a second or third interview, or even better, make them an attractive offer. Now, ideally, you've been asking questions throughout the interview as they occur to you. If you haven't, the interviewer is probably wondering about how curious or interested you are in the position. This is your opportunity to demonstrate your interest and your intelligence. The first thing I want to address is how many questions should you ask? Remember, you hopefully have most of the information you need because you are asking questions throughout the interview. It's a fine line between asking too many questions and not enough. So ask how many? Between three and five, depending on if any of them can be answered with a simple yes or no or some other three word answer. Your first question should clarify anything you are not clear on. Hopefully you won't need to do this as you've been asking questions throughout the interview, but maybe they skipped over something. The one big caveat here is do not mention many or benefits, no matter how badly you want to discuss it. Best practice advice on this issue recommends you avoid the topic for as long as possible until they've fallen in love with you, hopefully putting you in the driver's seat on that one. Remember I said hopefully, for as you know, there's no guarantees on that one. We did a separate video on how to answer that question earlier, and I'll put a link to it in the description so you'll know how to address that issue when it is raised. You can watch it after you finish this one. I'm now going to give you a series of other questions for you to ask. You can pick which ones to use depending upon what has been discussed in the interview so far and one other consideration. The other consideration will be, who are you talking to? If it's the first interview and it's a screening one, maybe with someone from HR, your questions will be a little different than if you're talking to your prospective boss, or even more importantly, your prospective boss's boss. No matter who you are interviewing with, make sure you ask something along the lines of, do you need me to clarify or elaborate on anything regarding my suitability for the position? Or do you have any other questions for me? Okay, that's important. Now, other questions that you might ask either one include things like, is there anything we haven't covered that you think is important to know about working here? Sometimes, for whatever reason, something got skipped or it didn't fit neatly into the discussion or the interviewer just forgot to ask the question. Or maybe your answer wasn't clear to them and they didn't understand what you were saying. Whatever the reason, this gives them the opportunity to fill in any blanks they may have about you your background and your answers. This is one question you should always include and it also might be one that you get a one word answer to. They may simply say, no, I have all the information I need, but make sure you include it. Next question, what was your best moment at this company? This gives them the chance to talk about themselves, something a lot of people like to do, and also brag a little bit about the company if they are so inclined. Next question, what are the next step in the process and when can I expect to hear from you? This should probably be your very last question if they have not already volunteered that information. Sometimes they'll have included it in their discussion. Just keep in mind that just because they say you will hear from them in a week doesn't mean that you will, but it gives you some sort of reference. While you definitely should get this information, keep in mind that it often changes radically. They may see someone they like much better, hopefully not, and make them an offer. Or conversely, they may have not been overly impressed with anyone they saw, and the time stretches and stretches. Longer time is really not a good sign, but it's not necessarily a bad sign. And of course, if you've been doing this for a while, you know that sometimes, no matter how well you thought the interview went, 
You just never hear from them again. Before we get to the questions, you might ask your prospective new boss. If you're getting value from this talk, please consider hitting the thumbs up or like button. It lets me know I should make more content like this. It lets YouTube know it should share this with more folks just like you. The following questions would work with HUR or others screening, but not directly involved with the position. What are the opportunities for professional development and growth within your organization or your company? This will give you an idea of the corporate culture within the organization, as well as the long-term potential for this organization for you. Don't forget, this interviewing is a two-way street. If they say they actively promote from within and or they provide budget for regular employees training, well, that's a good sign. Next question, what are the biggest challenges the company is facing right now and what can I do to help you overcome them? Now, to be fair, they may or may not answer this question honestly. There are certain things they're just not going to share with someone they've been interviewing. If there has been anything negative in the news about the company, then you should probably steer away from this question, no matter how interested you are. They could view that you're asking this question as a negative. How do you see the company evolving over the next five years? This is another question that gives the interviewer the chance to brag a little bit about the company if they choose to do so. The following would work with your prospective new boss, the person you will be reporting to, or his or her, her boss. First question, is this a new position? If not, why did the person before me leave the role? If yes, what led to it being created? Now, to be fair, I should share that I almost always ask this question towards the beginning of an interview. It helps paint a picture of what it is to work for this particular person and in this particular department. But if you haven't asked it, now's the time to ask it. If the person left, you might follow up with, well, how long have they been in that position? It's one thing if someone left after five years but it's a totally different thing if they left after five months. And of course, if it's a new position, you might want to inquire what led to it being created in the first place. Now, this is another area where you may not get an honest answer or the answer that you're getting is just the answer from the perspective of the person that you're talking to. So if they say, you know, somebody left because, you know, they weren't a good fit and um, or they were always late, whatever it is, you, you need to take everything with a grain of salt. What do you think the most challenging aspect of the job is? It is important for you, if you get the job, to fully understand what you're getting into and where your new boss's priorities are. In reality, this might not be the most challenging part of the job. It's just where the interviewer sees it as being challenging and what's important to them. Beyond the technical skills required to succeed in the role, what sort of skills do you think will serve the company and the position best? These are skills usually not mentioned in the job description. It might be something like diplomacy or managing diffi difficult employees, etc. The question lets you demonstrate that you understand the job is more about more than just a particular task. These questions can help cement a strong first impression or help you salvage an uninspiring performance during the beginning and the first parts of the interview. Ideally, you wouldn't need to salvage anything if you did a good job at the beginning of the in in interview but sometimes people are nervous. We understand just how important this is, and because of this, we recently put together some tips to help you make that stellar first impression. You should watch it right now using the link that has appeared on your YouTube screen if you're watching this on YouTube and is in the description. Good luck.